Dr. John Chuck, Dr. Chuck, you know how I feel about you. You're one of my absolute favorite people. Um, he's going to be talking about leadership. He is a longtime friend of the Medical Society and has worked very closely with me as the chair of our Joy of Medicine program. He's also a family physician and founder and CEO of Serotonin Surge Charity. Now, um, add your questions to the chat as you have them. Also, there's going to be two breakout sessions, you guys, so I really do expect you to participate, and I promise it's going to be fun because that's what Dr. Chuck is all about. Dr. Chuck, um, I'm looking forward to your presentation, and I know several of our staff members actually came on because they love hearing you speak as well, so <laughs> um, please take it away. You're on mute. You're still on mute, Dr. Chuck. Anyway, uh, anyway, you put some pressure on me to perform now, uh, but I'm really grateful to be here uh, today. Thank you for the kind invitation. Uh, I just raced back from a lunch meeting at Marillo's in Vacaville, got here right on time, and my, my belly is filled with a, uh, a chicken tostada and some rice and beans, so I'm very happy. Anyway, I know you just uh, um, enjoyed a lot of activity. I do like beginning with one of my favorite stretches on the planet. And I learned this from an 85 year old physician named Rachel Remen, who can still do it with great flexibility. And so what I want you all to do, and um, I, I know most of you, I can't see you live, but I'll just assume you're following along and just follow me is I want you to start off by reaching up towards the sky and uh, you can get on your tippy toes if you want and just reach for all the things and the people in life that inspire you and think about all the things that you aspire to be and, and your goals. And as you do that, you know, just feel your body stretching out in a really good, comfortable way. Yeah, we can go to the side too, like Lindsay is, if you're really flexible and, and eager and things. Okay, and now I want you to lean forward. And if you're sitting in front of a desk, don't hit your head, okay? But lean forward and touch your fingers towards your toes. And as you do so, just remind yourself of just the foundations of who you are in life. Who are the people that hold you up? Uh, what are the things that you believe in? that sort of form the foundation of, of who you're trying to be on this planet. Okay, now I want you to come back up and uh, I want you to pretend that we're all together, um, which is, uh, we're starting to do things like that now. And I want you to reach out to your sides and pretend that you're standing in a circle of all the students and that you can reach out and touch these uh, people with whom uh, you're enjoying this wonderful day with SSVMS today. And by the way, th things are sort of opening up as people get vaccinated. Last week, uh, last night, I, I held a book launch party for a book I wrote and it was, we had a hundred people and it was just lovely, just lovely. And, and I know that you're all looking forward to things like getting back to the classroom and things. Okay, and last but not least, I want you to sort of reach in and touch your own heart. Just kind of come in and touch your fingers to your chest here and just make a commitment to uh, reconnect with the heart and soul of who you are as a human being. And, and what you're trying to do in this world. So Eric, oh, 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 thank you for coming on live. We got Eric in the house, nice. Okay, uh, usually I see you dressed up in a fancy shirt and tie and a white coat, but this, this is lovely, okay. So, um, all right, so, so welcome everybody. And I can't tell you how grateful I am for this invitation to talk on two things that, that I think are really important. I, I hope you think it's important. I hope you think it's something that you're interested in, uh, leadership, and confidence. I got a little confused because as I log, as I looked at my calendar and I logged in today, I think it said interviewing and confidence, but but it is about leadership, I hope, right? So, so yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and we do have, we don't have two breakout groups today. We have three, one towards the end to just kind of keep everybody awake and alive here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and ask to share my screen and I have a little PowerPoint, I made this PowerPoint just for you guys. It's brand new, fresh PowerPoint. Let's see, and we'll go with the first slide here. Okay. All right, so we're talking about leadership. I, I love this graphic. I steal graphics left and right off the internet and without paying anybody anything, and I hope that's okay. And I hope that the Medical Society is not liable for this, but um, you know, we're, we're all just people on the planet and stuff, but every now and then, um, you know, our organizations or our families or our friends uh, calling us to be leaders, and it's it, it's a it's a little uh, it's a little scary. I think it's not something where any of us are inclined to do, but sometimes we're asked to cast a long shadow, maybe something that is um, kind of a stretch for us. 
Uh, and um, uh, I, I think that what you will find uh, as, as you go on in the years is that you, you'll take on increasing roles of leadership over time, just sort of whatever you can handle. And uh, maybe um, midlife or later in your life, it's something you actually really enjoy. But I, I will tell you that um, uh, our city, our county, our state, our nation, our world is in desperate need of leadership. Um, uh, we can't just all sit in the peanut gallery for our entire lives. Uh, sometimes organizations and groups need leaders to um, help us make progress when things look bleak. And uh, you know, if you step back and look at what's happened uh, in the United States over the past few years, um, we can't respond to challenges by blaming and dividing people. That, that is not what leaders do. Um, great leaders bring people together during times of crisis to work together to do things that we could never achieve on our own. So um, my, my wish for you, all of you uh, tuning in today, young and old, is, is that you would have the opportunity in your life uh, to work with others, to do great things uh, that are much bigger than any of us as individuals. And, and in, in some instances, uh, we'll need you to step up and the, be the leaders of that. Okay, so um, this is the first small group breakout. And I think we'll give people about five minutes or so. Um, I think the breakout groups are gonna be about groups of, let's see, it's gonna be groups of seven or so, Lindsay, something like that. Yeah, five to seven. And um, I wanted to start out by having you in your small groups, just talk among yourselves about um, who some of the leaders are in your life. As, as you step back, and look around in your life, your everyday life, who are some people who you see as leaders? Okay, so I'm gonna let the, um, the technically savvy people take it from here and break you up into small groups. I'm gonna set my timer, oh, for about you know four to five minutes, and then uh, maybe we'll bring everybody back. And then I would love to hear report outs from the different groups about um, the stories of the leaders in your life. And maybe each group, if you could designate a report out person. Uh, so, so when you break them into your small groups, the first thing you do is decide who's gonna report out to the bigger group. And then I'll call on those different group uh, report leaders to uh, uh, share the stories when we gather back up. Okay, any questions before we break up into those small groups? And my understanding is that each of the small groups has a facilitator, right, Lindsay? Okay, take it away, I'm setting my watch. Here we go, four to five minutes. All right, Dr. Chuck, as they jump in there, you should be able to now jump from room to room. Ooh, I can do that. And what yeah, I do just, that just, just by clicking on different things here. So if you go down to breakout rooms, you should be able to um, join. You'll see there's five rooms and you should be able to join. Ooh, because I want to do that. Okay. I'm not the most super savvy person. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm going on. Uh, if you click, if you click breakout rooms down at the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna have to go. Maybe I have to stop share screen sharing. Okay. Maybe you so have to do that. Yeah. Everything. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Now we're doing well here. Uh, we're gonna go to um, breakout rooms. There we go. And then you can just join any of them. Oh, I just click on it. You just click join. Okay. Oh, or just click on the room. Or uh, okay, maybe that's what your view is. Oh, no, maybe I have to room one, room one, broadcast message to all. I'm not sure it gives me the option to join it. I see under breakout rooms. It should I, say join next to room one. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. When I go over the number, it says join that. Okay. And then I would just unjoin it. Yeah. And then, then okay. you'll be able to jump out of it too. And can I tell looking at the names who the facilitator is in each room? Um, so the facilitator for room one is Marley. Okay. Oh, um, oh right. I sh it should just be the names I recognize from the staff. 
Yeah, Donna is an, another one, Adriana and Judith. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I'm going to try that. Thank you so much. This is fun. Okay. All right, are you ready for me to call them all back? Oh, yes, I'm ready.
All right. Well, welcome back, everybody. It's great to have you back and things. Um, I'm going to get my slide back up here and go backwards here. Let's go like this. Um, OK, so um, uh, thank you for letting me drop into your different breakout rooms. I really enjoyed hearing the conversations and participation. And so what I'd like to do now is invite the, uh, uh, the report out people to share what people um, spoke about in their groups. Abigail, do you want to go first? Sure. So we had like a wide variety of people of um, who people find leaders in their life. So we had anywhere from parental figures, so um, parents, so what traditional parent figures are for um, um, dads and moms, um, teachers. And then I know for me, because, um, you know, I'm the presenter here, um, I've had doctors be really big leaders in my life because I was, um, we couldn't figure out why I was having really debilitating symptoms. And then one doctor kept running more and more tests and it took years, but he figured out that I had a really debilitating neurological condition. And he took the initiative to keep finding out more and more. And I just really appreciate the leadership he took. So I really look up to him. Yeah. Thank you. Next group. Kiana, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, so in group three, we were just talking about um, something similar to what they were previously talking about too. We said that, uh, well, we all agreed mostly that uh, our leaders in our lives were probably our parents because um, you know we were able to grow up with them and we spend most of our lives with them. Um, and we also uh, talked about how uh, you know, doctors and teachers and other people in the community could be um, leaders for anybody, really. And uh, just, um, I guess, the most prominent quality that uh, stands out when um, we're, you know, looking at leaders in our lives is uh, the fact that no matter um, how easy it is to give up in some situations, they're able to pick themselves up and continue to just push on, um, even if it is really difficult and they, they grow from their mistakes. That's beautiful. Thanks for that report. Who's next? All right, I'm not sure what group number we were, but I guess I'll just go for a group. So uh, one, one main thing that we kind of saw was the people who we kind of surround ourselves with. So, uh, I mean, obviously our parents and one big one was definitely our friends and uh, I guess teachers, because I mean, we live almost every day of our life with them and you kind of, uh, I guess, reflect on each other and sort of improve yourselves. And then uh, not only does that have to be people that you specifically know, but it could also be, uh, you know, people who are actually famous, like, I don't know, one example was Serena Williams a famous uh, tennis player uh, they kind of set role models and people kind of look up to them as uh, I guess yeah just role models all right wonderful okay so do we have one more group yeah, yeah uh, Ashley, you could go I think Ari Oh, yeah, I was gonna go. Um, we so basically in my group, we talked about that as well, like our parents, our support system, uh, teachers, guidance counselors. And we also that they we see them as leaders because they support us and they care about us and they are trying to help us grow and guide us. There was actually one more group, Dr. Chuck, there's okay. Angelique as well. Okay, here we go. So I'm reporting for group five. Our group mainly talked about our school, our school teachers who were strong and motivational individuals who were always there for the students. They were always there to give us advice to become better individuals in our personal life, in our per personal life and academically. They created a welcoming environment where students could openly express themselves and improve upon ourselves. And they would openly relate to students to make us feel more comfortable so we could ask them and gain their knowledge to help us, to help guide us through life. 
All right. Well, well, thank you all for sharing in your breakout groups and thank you for uh, re re uh, reporters. Um, I had the pleasure of dropping into the different groups and I just love hearing your stories. And I think, of course, there are a lot of stories about parents and teachers and doctors, um, and even some people we don't know, like the great Serena Williams, uh, you know, people who persevere and show great grit. But I also heard comments about peers, right? And the people you hang out with all the time being leaders. And I wonder if many of you have thought about how you are seen as leaders by your peers and by your teachers and by your doctors. I, you know, I was a, a doc, primary care doctor for 31 years and I cannot tell you how many of my patients I highly respected as leaders, even if they didn't have a formal title of leaders, I just really admired the way they were living and the, the habits that made them really um, uh, successful and, and admirable and stuff. So um, I have another um, breakout question for everybody. And um, see, I'm gonna share my slide thing. And, and it is this, tell us about your experience as a leader. So once again, even though you may not think of yourself as a leader, I guarantee you that the type of students who are in this sort of summer program, I guarantee you a lot of people are thinking of you as leaders. So I wanna have us break up into our small groups again. And I want you to share in your small group what your experience has been like as a leader. And, and what did it, um, when, when I asked what was that like for you, I mostly care about what that, felt like for you emotionally? I mean, was that elating? Was it petrifying? Was it confusing? Was it vague? And I understand that this is a little bit harder question. So I don't expect all of you to have an immediate answer, but just start thinking about that. What What has your experience in life been like as a leader? And most importantly, what did it feel feel like for you. Okay. All right. Enjoy that. I think I'm going to do the stop share and then I'm going to do that fancy thing and maybe drop in on some groups again. And uh, it take, turns out it takes a little more than four or five minutes. I think I gave you eight minutes or so and I'll just sort of follow it. And I'm sort of, you know, when people stop talking, I'll, I'll just end, end, this, end the breakout rooms. Okay. So, um, okay. I'm going to stop the share and then I'll let uh, uh, Sam or whoever's doing the technical magic and break you up into small groups again.
Are you having a good time playing with the technology, Dr. Chuck? <laughs> You're on mute. Mute. You're on mute, Dr. Chuck. So, so, so that's another thing. You know, when you come out of the breakout rooms, it defaults you to being on mute. So that's something new I learned. And like Lindsay, you're on mute right now, right? So, okay, just just to forewarn you all, and I'm watching all the names reappear, like you know, like on a like a game show on TV, because I think that when I end the breakout rooms, there's 60 seconds for people to come back in. This is all very fancy. Now, my daughter who works at LinkedIn in learning and development. She is a whiz at this stuff. And she just laughs at the fact that somehow her father could be working with Zoom at all. Like, I think she thinks like, like I'm a toddler on Zoom, which I am. And I'm sure that every single one of these students is laughing at me right now. That being said, okay. Um, once again, I had the pleasure of uh, dropping in on every room and I just heard some wonderful things. And I wanna thank our facilitators. You're doing such a fabulous job. Uh, helping to lead the conversation. So let's go ahead and have some report outs from each one of the breakout teams. Abigail, do you want to go first again? Sure. Um, so we talked about different leadership positions. Um, I guess we'll talk about my specific experience. <laughs> um, so I know for me, I've been I've had to utilize my first aid training in the past. And when I go into those situations, I go very methodical and um, I don't panic. I just, my brain, the methodical part of my brain takes over. But when it's done, I know I get a big sense of relief and um, like happiness almost. And then I wanna do it again. And I like leadership positions and I like helping the community. And um, I try to engage in stuff like this a lot. So, yeah. Thank you. Next. Giselle, do you want to go next, please? Giselle? Um, yeah. So we basically talked about leadership in the household. Um, and... For example, um, I'm uh, an older si sibling, so I have like a younger sister. So I have to like be cautious with how I act and speak because I am a leader to my little sister. And then um, another person said how um, they are a um, translator for their household because their parents don't really speak English. And their experience was that it was stressful and sometimes it was confusing and just frustrating at times. Um, and then another person said how um, they were also in leadership in school. So they like were a part of um, all the activities and they like worked together as a group to coordinate all the activities at school. Thank you. These are these stories are so inspirational and impressive. Next group. Um, Lana, could you share your stories? Oh yeah. So um, I'm the vice president of the Key Club at my school, which is basically a club that organizes like community service events for um, students to attend, just for us to like help out the community. And we we have events that like raise money for like the pediatric trauma program too and so when I was a freshman I joined key club and I was like very shy and like timid but joining key club like really helped me like become like engaged in my community and helped me meet a lot of people so when I became vice president um, my junior year and, and I'm going to continue on to my senior year it kind of helped me like realize that becoming a leader like pays off because I'm helping the kids that were like me when I first joined Key Club. So I'm helping them become more sociable and like just becoming better students to help out the community and inspiring others to help out too. So it's really rewarding um, to have a leadership position. Thank you for sharing that story, Lana. I had heard that when I was peeking in on your group. So I'm, I'm glad you shared that. Next group. Sorry, do you want to go for our group? Yeah. 
Um, basically, we talked about like the leadership roles at like in either school or um, being a coach for like a golf team for kids, and also um, like being the oldest sibling as well. And basically, we all agreed that like uh, we're being leader, we're being role models to them, and they look up to us. And it may be scary, but we just gotta push forward and you know learn from our experiences as being leaders. Thank you. Okay, group three, I think we're up. Okay, um, well, uh, we talked about um, being a leader in schools, in the school setting also, um, just uh, working around with our um, under, our lower classmen. And uh, once um, one of the group members were talking about being part of the link crew and helping in the freshman orientation and how they were able to just, uh, encourage other people who were who volunteered to um, just, you know, be themselves and to work with the under uh, the lower classmen. Um, and then I also shared about my experience in band and how I unexpectedly, um, you know, got the got a the leadership role for my section. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't see it coming. I, was, I got really nervous, but um, in the end, I was able to learn uh, just a bunch of things um, from um, my from helping them. And yeah, it was just really nice. Wonderful. Next group. I think that might be everybody. Is that everybody? Okay, has everybody yeah, I think had so. and then all the facilitators are shaking their heads? Yes, they've all okay, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, so, um, a few comments about that. Um, first of all, you are all currently leaders and role models, uh, regardless of whether you know it or if you desire that. You don't really have a choice in life. People are always watching you and looking to be inspired by you. And that's just a fact of life. Um, and I think it's important to just to embrace that and then to just lead from wherever you stand. And, and you do not need a formal leadership position to lead. Um, I, I just wrote a book called Pearls from the Practice of Life. And, and one of my favorite chapters is about Carlos, who was our lead custodian at the Kaiser Davis Medical Offices. And I would say that he was one of the top leaders in our entire clinic and um, very inspirational, a great attitude about work, always a smile on his face. If you wanted to be inspired during the day, you just checked in with, with Carlos. I mean, and, and then he led our noontime walks to try and get all the nurses and doctors away from their computers and get some exercise. And, uh, and he probably played the most important role in the clinic. You might think that it's the radiology tech or the pharmacist or the doctor or the nurse, but if that building is not spick and span clean and smelling good, uh, there's nothing a doctor can do to recover that experience for a patient. So, so um, sometimes uh, the greatest leaders do not even have formal leadership roles. And um, uh, I was asked in the chat, you know, how do you become a leader? I, I, I will talk a little bit about that here, but I think it's important just to ask somebody to mentor you to be a leader. If there's somebody who you see as a leader and you admire their leadership skills, just send them a message, email or text and say, hey, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I really look up to you as whatever, as a leader, as a coach. And I was wondering whether you can be one of my mentors. And I think that you'll find that many people are, are very surprised by the request and actually honored that you see them as a leader and that you're interested in their advice um, about how you could be a better leader. That, I, I bet you that person already admires you as a leader. Okay, uh, I'm one of these people where, um, you know, I made this slide deck just for this presentation, but I am so inspired by you guys and your participation. I, I'm not even, I don't even know what the next slide is, but we're gonna find out when I press this button, okay? But I'm having a good time just listening to your stories. Okay, so uh, this is a slide about leadership. Um, it's, you know, I always like looking at the dictionary definition. So the action of leading a group of people or an organization or the state or position of being a leader, 
Um, and, uh, uh, but, but basically leaders are people who get others to follow, I mean, in a nutshell. And I think that um, leaders, the best leaders, they actually have a vision for a future that's better than what currently is. I mean, they're often very dreaming, visionary type people that they, they paint what's called a picture perfect postcard of the way they want things to be. And, and then they help lead people to get there. Um, great leaders, um, and I think there are many elements of this in many of you as I listen to your stories, they connect ju not just with the intellect and the minds of the people they, they're leading, but also with the hearts and emotions. Um, uh, you, you know, there, there's a psychologist, um, uh, uh, Professor Height from NYU, and he talks about, uh, he studies how people make decisions about what they think and do. And he has this metaphor of the rider and the elephant. And, and, and just picture this gigantic elephant and there's this tiny little man on top and that he's called the rider. And I think we like to think that it's the rider who's direct, directing uh, you know, where the elephant is going. The rider represents our, our minds and our intellect and, and the elephant represents our emotions. And the truth of the matter is that while the mind might have an opinion, it's the elephant or the emotions that ultimately determine the direction of where this team goes. And so the more you as a leader can not just understand what people are saying, but how they're feeling. And that's why I asked the earlier question, how did it feel to be a leader? Feelings are very important. Once again, leaders get people to follow in the, the most simplistic of terms. And then great leaders, they're people who they're thinking about themselves, but not very much. They're thinking mostly about the team and where they want the team to go. And they're not people who are clamoring for recognition or titles or awards. They just want the team to do well. And I know that you followed people who are all about themselves. And I'm guessing that wasn't a very inspirational experience for you, but you've also followed teams where the leaders clearly care more about you and the team moving forward than themselves. And those are the best leaders. And last but not least, and, and I heard many of this in your stories, great leaders persevere. Like when things go bad, they don't quit. And I think a, a current uh, popular term for this is grit. In fact, I think Malcolm Gladwell might have, might have written a book about grit, but, but basically it's like being like a cockroach, okay? Like, like we all think, oh, you know, I admire, you know, tigers and eagles and stuff, and they're fine, but really it's the cockroach that's gonna win. After there's a big nuclear war, it's just gonna be the cockroaches, okay? There are gonna be tons of them. And have you ever tried to like exterminate? You know, I grew up in this tiny apartment in Chinatown in Africa, full of cockroaches. We could never exterminate those things. Like you try and kill them and everything. They just come back with friends. So if you're thinking of what is my role model or my spirit an animal for leadership, yeah, it could be the eagle, but it should really be like the cockroach. Another thing I want to say about leaders is, you know, we live in the United States of America. I love America. There's no country I'd rather live in. I'm, you know, my ancestors are from China. I definitely don't want to be living in China or Hong Kong, okay? But in America, we have our history and it's a great history, okay? But, but a lot of our history, you know, uh, it, the story of leadership is about, uh, about white males. That's just the way it was. And this is a picture of Robert E. Lee and his commanders and stuff. And, and I don't, I'm not saying this is a good or bad part of our history. It's just what was, okay? Um, but, but we're moving forward, right? It's, you know, it's, it's, it's 2021, it's not 1632, it's not 1776. And so this is just a, a silly example, but I think one that's kind of colorful. Um, I was part of a group called the American Leadership Forum. And the American Leadership Forum, it's a national organization. Um, uh, but they have local chapters. And I, I, I was uh, in this program for one year in the Sacramento region uh, about five or 10 years ago. And these are my classmates. And um, uh, they're all old. So that, that's not such a great example. But, you know, they, they just look like the people in the community. I mean, they, they come in all shapes and sizes and ethnicities. It's, it's not just all one gender or one race. And this is what leadership is, you know, evolving to look like in America and stuff, right? And and what the American Leadership Forum does is it brings together leaders from very diverse slices of the community and, and then brings them together to meet once or twice a month. And then we go on this week long 
you know, camping trip in the mountains where everybody has to poop in the woods. And it's, it's just a wonderful experience. And you might recognize some of the people, but uh, the fella on the right lower corner, that's Daniel Hahn, who used to be with, you know, Sacramento PD, then Roseville chief, now the Sacramento chief. But he's just a real live, wonderful human being from this area who has emerged homegrown leader. And this could easily be one of you. I mean, easily in short order, you know, th th this is where you're going as leaders and stuff. Okay, next, um, let's see, it's, uh, it's 145. And uh, Lindsay asked me to talk a little bit about courage too. Okay, so let's see what I thought about courage when I made this slide. So uh, this is a quote from Nelson Mandela. Uh, you know, if you wanna have role models in life, I, I think sports people are okay. Like, like I love Re LeBron James and, and, and Jason Kidd as much as anybody, but I really admire people like Nelson Mandela and stuff. And, and if you don't know much about him, you should Google him and read about it. But uh, this is a quote. He says, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. And the brave man or woman is not he or she who does not feel afraid, but he or she who conquers that fear. So um, I was when I was listening to some of your breakout groups, um, I heard many people say that assuming leadership roles, um, it can be frightening, right? I mean, you were saying it's rewarding, but many of you also mentioned the fear. And so just, just know that all leaders, one of the best leaders, absolutely positively are fearful, but, but they learn to harness that. Fear. It's not that they're not afraid. It's not, you know, we have a friend who's a, a jet fighter pilot in the Navy. I mean, the, the, this is dangerous work. It's not that he's not afraid, but he's learned to harness that fear to do his job well, because he has a job to protect Americans worldwide, right? He, he cannot fail in that mission. So, so he harnesses that fear. And that's something you do as a leader. It, it's not that you don't know all the bad things. It's not that you're not scared by the bad things, but you need to be the leader in the room and, and make progress and lead other people uh, to succeed. Okay. Um, I was going to have us break up into small groups again. Oh, we have, we have 13 minutes, I, but this is such a good exercise. Okay. So I'm going to have us break up into our small groups again. And the question is, what are you afraid of? What, what, what are you afraid of as a human being in high school, maybe headed off to college? What are you afraid of as a leader? What, what, what are a couple of the things that trip you up and, and make you feel stuck or sort of eat away at your confidence to be good? What are you afraid of? Okay, that, that's the prompt question. And um, I'm gonna end the slide share and I'm gonna let us uh, uh, break up into our small groups again. We'll go, about, we'll go about seven minutes, okay? Group leaders will go seven minutes. That will take us to 155, which will give us plenty of time to close up right on time at two. Okay, sound like a plan? Ready, set, go, seven minutes, here we go.
Welcome back, everybody. I'm sorry if I cut anybody short, but I wanted to give you all enough time to report out. And then I just had a couple of minutes of comments I, that I wanted to close with. So we'll wait for everybody to gather up here and we'll we'll start the report outs. I'm trying to do some math here. So um, I think we'll give, this is gonna be a big challenge for all our emerging leaders, but I'm gonna give each presenter like one minute to condense the report out and then we'll we'll finish on time, so. I love this technology. Isn't this marvelous that like we can be all over the Sacramento region and meeting like this? And I, this is almost better than meeting in person. I didn't have to drive any place. This is just lovely. Um, okay. Don't say that, Dr. Chuck, because they're all supposed to be showing up tomorrow at the Medical Society. Oh, okay. so. I, I, yeah, just, just, <laughs> just delete that whole thing from the recording. Okay, let's go ahead and start the report yeah. out so we can finish on time. Okay, first group, you're up. Kiara, you're first. I nominate, I nominate you. you. Okay. Um, for me, I would say like my biggest fear would be what I said with my group was like making the wrong decision with like school or just like friendships or just anything. But in like regards to like the medical field, I'm so like worried and anxious that like if I go into the medical, go to medical school and then like it turns out I don't have what it takes or it's not really what I'm interested or in or passionate about. It's like my whole life is kind of like based off of like college or that's what it seems like or feels like right now so i'm so worried about like making a wrong decision when i go to college that will affect like my family and like myself lifelong okay thanks for sharing that i i think you, you that is a fear that is shared by many on this call whether or not they admit it okay next up i can go next uh, so basically my group, we talked about being afraid of like the future, not having control and also um, as well like doubting ourselves. And that is like a really big uh, downfall because like we overthink it, we overthink ourselves a lot. Okay. Emily, group three. Um, personally for me, I don't really have a failure because even if I make a mistake, I learned from that mistake to do better and to become a better leader. But um, some of my group mates, they're just scared of failure and they have lack of confidence thinking that they won't be as a good leader to others. Thank you. Next, a couple of more groups. Um, in my group, we talk about having a fear of public speaking, um, accepting each other and um, people depending on you. How like we, sometimes we um, feel guilty that because we mess up and people depended on us to succeed and we kind of fail them. Mm -hmm. So like that is one of our fears. And the pressure of public speaking in front of everyone, whether it be a large or small, Sometimes that pressure get into your mind and it allow you to mess up. By the way, you're already excellent at it, Richmond. So good for you. Okay, last group. I think there's one more. Um, my group said that um, we're scared of like being um, criticized or judged or like making the wrong a major wrong decision. Um, but we just want to make everyone's voice heard. And then we just want to do um, what benefits the majority. Thank you, everybody. Wow. I tell you, if nothing else, you're already great public speakers. You're, you are killing it as young people and stuff. OK, let me just close this out here. Um, so uh, it turns out that all of us are afraid of a lot of things, OK? And, and these are some of the typical things that people are afraid of. Uh, they may look very familiar to you. But you would not be a human being if you had were not afraid of things. That's just part of the human condition, the predicament. And it's because our brains are wired like that. When we were evolving, we were trained to be really fearful of things that could kill us, like you know, poisonous spiders and saber-toothed tigers and stuff. Um, but it turns out that um, we don't have to worry too much about things like saber-toothed tigers and life-threatening snakes. Uh, most of the fears we have about total failure and death, um, 
they're not really rooted in reality. And it turns out that there's a big science about how we can train our brains to be less fearful. And, and, and the psychological process is called extinction. Uh, public speaking is one of the top fears, but I think you're all good on that. So I just want to end with, with, with this thought. What, what would you do if you weren't afraid in your life? And this is a lovely post. This is my old messy office at Kaiser. And this is a poster that one of our pharmacists gave me and we're very good friends. And, and this question really inspired me. And I think it helped make the last 10 years of my career a lot more productive because I thought to myself, yeah, I am a fraidy cat, but what if I got brave and I dared to do really good things and didn't do it by myself, but did it with other people and we told the truth about the experience. So the answer is, if you lived like you weren't afraid, you would be a badass, courageous leader. And that might be a bad word, but I don't really care. I want you all to be badass, courageous leaders. There's a really famous woman, a, a sociologist called Brene Brown, and she says the real badasses, they're not the people who are perfect and never get anything wrong, or you know they look a certain way. They're the people who dare greatly which I encourage you all to do in life and tell the truth about your experience. Don't sugarcoat it because other people are trying to dare greatly too and you can do it with them. And if you do it supporting one another, your life will be a, a lot better. Uh, last but not least, you're gonna be leaders. And if you're gonna be a leader, be a servant leader. Don't be the kind of leader who's just from the ivory tower telling everybody what to do, just talking to their brains, but never their emotions. Be the leader that leads by serving. Talk to the people doing the work, ask them what's important to them and do the work with them and lead by example. Oh, we're gonna skip that slide. But here's an example. My friend, Brad Crutchfield, one of my poker buddies, just a regular guy, no graduate degrees. He's a pre-med failure, okay? Didn't get into medical school. He became the president of 10X of uh, Biorad, big company. And then he moved on to be the chief commercial officer of 10X Genomics, took them public recently, super successful. And I said, Brad, you're a horrible poker player and you, you're not very smart. How are you such a great leader? And Brad said, this is how I've led for four decades. I meet with people all the time and I only ask them two questions. What's working for you? Because I want to celebrate you and share best practices and tell me what's not working for you. Because I, as a leader, I want to remove the obstacles to you being great. And you're saying, oh, you know, servant leadership, that's so soft, that doesn't work. Well, don't tell Brad and 10X that because they're doing super successful in a very competitive market. I think that's all I have to say. And I want to end by thanking you all for being part of this great summer program. Thank you to all the group facilitators. Thank you for already being courageous leaders. You don't have to be perfect to be a leader and stuff, right? And courage does not mean you don't have fear. It means that you harness your fear and you work with other people to make progress even when things aren't going right. Okay, thank you everybody. That's it, that's all I have. I ran two minutes over, I'm sorry. That's okay, thank you Dr. Tuck. Students, help me thank Dr. Tuck for taking the time to put together this presentation. I know I personally have learned so much from you Dr. Tuck about how to be a leader. This is not your first go around with teaching this type of um, you know, presentation. So thank you for, for doing this. Guys, I'm so excited to see most of you tomorrow at the Medical Society for our in-person session. Um, also, those of you that have been able to attend all of the sessions are going to receive a link to apply for the museum internship. Um, so you'll be receiving that either today or tomorrow. So Sam, I know Sam's gonna take care of all that. She's amazing. Um, so if you have any questions or again, if you need a ride to the medical um, office, the, the medical society offices tomorrow, we'll pay for a lift for you. And I hope you can also bring some of your family. So we'll see you tomorrow. And thank you again. All this was wonderful. Is it 2 p.m. right? It will start 2 p.m. It is still 2 p.m. I realize that you're going to be a little late. Um, we that's totally fine. Fazia, you said you were going to be around 2.30 or 3 o'clock. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Guys, of course. Th this is Dr. Williams. I was really looking forward to meeting you all, but it turns out I'm in Tampa, Florida, and I won't make it back, but I, I hope to meet you all at some point in the future. But thank you very, very much for coming to, um, to this session. It's great that you had an opportunity to hear Dr. Chuck, each of you, 
has become a great leader and an ambassador. So keep doing what you're doing. You, you'll find success. Thank you. Oh, and Marley put the address in the chat if you need it. Thanks, Marley. Miss Lindsay? Yes. Miss Lindsay, I have a question. So um, when, I don't know who, what was his name again, but about the physical um, therapist, you know? Sure, yeah. Dan McLean, so yes. Yes, I had a question, but I forgot to ask him. So I don't know how can uh, I... We'll have his email. So Sam will send, if you check your email later today, Sam will send his contact information out to everyone. And mm -hmm. you are more than welcome to um, just email him directly. Oh, okay, perfect. Well, I will email him. And thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. All right. Hope to see you tomorrow. Absolutely. All right. Thanks again, Dr. Chuck. I really appreciate it. You know how much I, we love hearing from you. So I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you for the opportunity. Eric, safe travels. I'll see you all.